Hi, I'm Maximus, and today I want to talk to you about symbiosis. Principia Sutra, Episode 1, The Major Transitions in Evolution. So, The Major Transitions in Evolution it was a book uh, written in 1995 by some evolutionary biologists. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. But more generally, it's, it's an emerging paradigm about viewing uh, the history of life, the, the, the history of evolution, uh, which I think is really, really important. Um, so, in general, the, the, the Major Transitions in Evolution takes, takes a very, very broad view of, of the history of life, and it looks at these sort of like really pivotal turning points. The, the message that, that this paradigm has, sort of the, the thesis of this video, is that the history of life is much better viewed as a story of symbiosis, a story of merging, a story of cooperation, a story of unity, than it is as this sort of like the more popularly told story of, of survival of the fittest and competition and kill or be killed. Both of these are stories. Life is life, and you can't really say the essence of life is cooperation or the essence of life is death, but the story that we use to, to talk about life I think is, is very important in terms of how we place ourselves in the world. And the major transitions paradigm allows us to think more about integration and unifying and, and symbiosis, and, and I think that's really important. The, the basic idea in the major transitions paradigm is, is to look at these key, key symbiotic mergers that have created the, the complexity uh, of life that we see today. So there's four really important mergers that I want to highlight in this video, and I'll give each of them a video later talking about the details, but I'm just going to go over the basics right now. Uh, so these four mergers are one, the emergence of the prokaryotic cell, two would be endosymbiosis, so prokaryotic cells merging together to form eukaryotic cells. The third would be multicellularity, so eukaryotic cells bonding together to create multicellular organisms, animals and plants. And then the fourth would be the integration of human society. The, the fourth one is, is obviously the most controversial because it's happening right now and, and you know arguing that it is happening is that, that's an open question. But my position is certainly that it is happening and has been happening for the last 10,000 years and will continue to happen. So one of the first people to argue for the major transitions paradigm was a microbiologist by the name of Lynn Margulis. And one of her major theses was that all, literally all, major evolutionary novelty was because of symbiosis. Um, and that, that's a very strong claim, and, and sure there's a lot of, of evolutionary novelty, you know, like good adaptations that were not caused directly by symbiosis. But symbiosis is a really, really remarkable way of overcoming fitness valleys. Evolutionary change occurs in, in very small steps. You can only, you know, go, you know, from here to here to here to here to here to here. That produces developmental constraints. The reason why we don't have flying pigs, flying pigs could outcompete regular pigs in every single possible scenario, right? The reason we don't have flying pigs is that all of the intermediary steps between pigs that we have now and pigs with wings would be less fit than either of the two end steps. So there's this fitness valley, right? In order, in order to get this novel adaptation of wingedness, right, the, the pig would have to go through this fitness valley Valley where it would be more susceptible to predation because it would have these weird stumps on its back and, and it wouldn't work. So this is why pigs don't have wigs. It, basically, the, the idea is that evolutionary change is confined to specific pathways. You can only get to a certain destination from a certain location. Evolutionary change is path dependent. What symbiosis does is it allows life to jump over these fitness valleys. So Stephen Jay Gould has another theory of evolution called punctuated equilibrium, which this major transitions paradigm dovetails in quite nicely. So Punctuated equilibrium says that if you look at like you know the story of life, like the grand story of life, you'll see these these punctuated moments of a very very great change, followed by periods of, of relative calm. You know, so you can have plants and like different leaf shapes will form, and then all of a sudden flowers will emerge out of nowhere. So what the major transitions paradigm argues is that the history of life has to be viewed in terms of these merging events that that are very rare, but also very 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 influential. So you have these bacterial cells merging to make eukaryotic cells, or have these eukaryotic cells merging to create multicellular creatures like me, and each of those merging events, you're getting evolutionary novelty from all of these disparate places in life, you, you, all of these different adaptations that have different evolutionary paths, and you're combining them. And by combining these different evolutionary paths, combining these adaptations, you create a higher level of complexity, a higher order of intricacy, which puts life onto the next stage. So it, it's about this notion of progress. Life started as, as these individual molecules, and now it's, you know, the forest and societies and all these crazy things. The major transitions paradigm is a way to view how these tiny things build up into greater things. And the way that they build up into greater things is, is by cooperating, which is a really interesting perspective to take on life. The way that evolution is typically taught in school is like, oh, it's survival of the fittest. Kill or be killed. Images of fighting animals and trees competing with each other for light. And, and that is certainly part of it. But that sort of 
competition is typically influential with these like minute changes to forms that already exist, you know, fine tuning a form for its environment. But the new forms, the, the really, really radical changes, the, the punctuated points of the punctuated equilibrium, those occur because something really radical has changed. You have some sort of hopeful monster that emerges from something that was nothing like it. And this can only occur with a symbiotic merger, when you have unlike pieces coming together to create a whole that's greater than the sum of its parts. So that's the major transitions paradigm in a nutshell. Uh, I'm going to make future videos sort of fleshing it out and, and giving more examples of each of the major transitions in turn and, and what makes those symbioses stick together. Uh, so stay tuned.